Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Brisman. I'm a neurosurgeon, and I'll be speaking to you today on the subject of acoustic neuromas. Acoustic neuromas are benign brain tumors that arise from the eighth cranial nerve, the nerve that is involved with hearing and balance. Uh, these usually present in adults. They are usually spontaneous developments, although in rare cases there can be familial uh, presentations. That is, it can run in families, usually in the case of NF2 or neurofibromatosis type 2. Symptoms of acoustic neuroma include decreased hearing, muffled hearing, ringing in the ears, fullness in the ears, dizziness and balance. The diagnosis is usually made on an MRI with and without gadolinium. In patients with pacemakers, the diagnosis could be made on a CAT scan of the head. Options for treatment include major categories of observation, radiation, and surgery. When we speak of observation, we usually mean follow-up MRIs to see if the tumor is getting bigger, as well as clinical examinations. When we speak of radiation, we're usually talking about super-focused radiation or stereotactic radiosurgery with machines like the Gamma Knife, Cyber Knife, or Novalis. And this is usually done in one, three, or five sessions, though sometimes it can be done in as many as 20 sessions with external beam radiation therapy. Surgery can be done in also several different ways, but the most common are going to be uh, approaches called retrosigmoid and translabyrinthine. These involve incisions behind the ear on the affected side to remove the tumor. The translabyrinthine uh, sacrifices the hearing mechanism, so it would only be appropriate in patients who did not have useful hearing to start with. And then a final surgical approach is called the middle fossa approach, which is rarely used uh, and used, used only for very small tumors within the internal auditory canal where hearing preservation was of interest. One question is why treat versus observing a particular case and some of the considerations are one that the hearing can deteriorate uh, suddenly or, or rapidly and therefore one might want to treat a tumor before the hearing deteriorates because the hearing preservation is usually no better than the level of the hearing at the time that we choose to do a treatment. The other consideration for treating on the earlier side is that if a tumor gets too big, it's no longer, may not be a good candidate for the focused radiation technique anymore. And, and the bigger the tumor gets, in general, the, the higher the risk associated with the treatment. That having been said, I, I was going to give a, just a general guideline on how I treat the tumors. For tumors that are under 5 millimeters, I will almost always just watch the tumors and observe. For tumors that are five millimeters up to three, about, about three centimeters or three to three and a half centimeters, which is about 30 to 35 millimeters, my treatment will be guided by different factors, including the age of the patient, the health of the patient, the size of the tumor, whether the tumor is enlarging, how fast it's enlarging, what symptoms the patient's having, are the symptoms progressive, and does the patient have neurofibromatosis too, and are there other tumors, and what are those tumors doing? Generally, I will, for most of these tumors in this range, I'm going to be thinking of either observing or treating with focused radiation, usually with one session radiation, radiosurgery with gamma knife. And usually when I do the treatments for the patients with hearing that is preserved at time of treatment, I'll use 12 to 12 and a half gray at the edge of the tumor, and for patients in whom hearing preservation is not a possibility, I'll use 13 gray to the edge. For patients with tumors that are large, let's say over about three to three and a half centimeters, then I'm usually going to offer a treatment, and the treatments are usually going to either be fractionated radiation, which could be uh, hypofractionated radiosurgery treatment in five sessions or more, could be 20 sessions, or surgical debulking followed by radiosurgery to the residual. Again, there are different clinical considerations that would guide which treatment will be best. Finally, the treatments, the radiosurgery as well as the surgery, are usually going to work. They're about 95 percent successful. For those patients in whom there is continued tumor growth or problem, one can 
undergo a second treatment, which could either be a radiosurgery followed by radiosurgery or a surgery followed by a surgery, or there can be crossover. One could have radiosurgery, and then if there's growth, do surgery, or if there's surgery and there's residual or growth, do radiosurgery. All those things having been said, both surgery and radiosurgery are very effective, but the risk profile for the radiosurgery is much, much lower. And as a result, I will usually prefer to do the outpatient super-focused radiosurgery uh, if, the, if both are possibilities. In summary, acoustic neuroma is a benign condition for which most of the time it can be treated by either observation only or with minimally invasive outpatient one-session super-focused radiosurgery. Thank you.